Hey guys, uh, it's Adam from Offshore's Photo. I wanted to talk to you today about the Nikon Z7. So I switched to the Nikon Z7 from the Nikon D850. Um, those of you who know a lot about camera gear, probably aware that the D850 was broadly regarded as one of the best DSLRs ever made. It was a high resolution DSLR, 45.7 megapixels regarded as great for sports, wildlife, studio, portrait, um, you know, just a fantastic camera. Um, so to be honest, I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience of sort of taking a chance, switching from a camera that I found to just be spectacular, beautiful, fantastic to use, a terrific DSLR. Um, but I decided to take the chance and switch to the Z7 because I wanted to move into videography. Um, and the D850, while it would produce good quality video footage of sort of largely stable or static subjects, um, the video autofocus for moving subjects, dynamic scenes, was never regarded as particularly good. It was, it was never very good. So yeah, I'm gonna to talk to you about what my experience has been like moving to this camera. So I'm not the best at reeling off specification lists, but um, I'll tell you that like the D850, the Nikon Z7 is a high resolution camera. It's, a, it's got a 45.7 megapixel sensor. Um, it shoots at nine frames per second. Uh, it's got 493 autofocus points. Um, the autofocus points cover almost completely sort of edge to edge coverage is provided by the autofocus points. So that's a, one of the great points about it. It shoots 4K at um, 30 frames per second, HD footage 120 frames per second. Um, it has five axis image uh, stabilization, in body image stabilization. So it's what they call a stabilized sensor on this, which helps to reduce camera shake when you're doing stills at slower shutter speeds or when you're doing video footage. Um, uh, what else can I talk about? Um, it, it was a, a, a landmark change for Nikon because they finally moved away from the Nikon F mount. So the F mount has been around for decades. Um, it's tried and true. There are countless Nikon lenses available for the F-mount, but with the Z7, Nikon moved to the Z-mount. So I'm not gonna leave that lens off for long because those of you who've used mirrorless cameras know that it's much easier to get dust on the sensor with mirrorless cameras than it is with the DSLR. Right, so what influenced my decision-making when it came to um, switch into the Nikon Z7. As I say, the main reason, the principal reason that I became more interested in a mirrorless camera was because they're just so much better for video. The video autofocus is just far superior in, um, in mirrorless camera bodies. Um, so the, the other factor that was key for me is um, I sort of made the leap and bought the Nikon D850 because at that time I was shooting surf photography from the land most of the time. I was finding I was having to do a fair amount of cropping um, of my images, but I wanted to retain really fantastic image quality. And I felt that my best chance of doing that was to go for a really high resolution camera body. Um, I'm not saying that you need um, a 45 megapixel uh, sensor to achieve really great image quality. I mean, I've seen images produced by the Nikon D750, the Sony a7 III that are just absolutely spectacular. Um, and, and so, you know, read around the subject if you're looking into um, buying a sort of a one of the more expensive mirrorless camera bodies because you really need to just make a decision based on what you're going to be using the equipment for. I decided to stick with a high resolution camera just because I was so happy with the 
the image quality results I got with the D850, um, I, I was just sort of sold on um, high resolution camera bodies. Um, so the Z7, so when it came time to actually consider switching to mirrorless, the, the two cameras that I looked at um, seriously were the Nikon Z7, which I eventually went for, and the Sony A7R3. Um, now the Sony A7R3 has slight, slightly smaller uh, sensor in terms of megapixels. I think it's 42 megapixels, is it? Um, but um, I'll talk a little bit about why I uh, fundamentally opted to stick with Nikon. Um, I went and had a play around with the uh, A7R3 in a camera store. Um, now, what I would say, um, one of the major advantages or one of the features of these mirrorless camera bodies that gets people so excited is the autofocus systems. And one of the main features of the autofocus systems that really win people over are the automatic eye autofocus. So autofocus is just becoming spectacularly good in these cameras. So the Sony, Sony really um, pushed the envelope a few years ago by developing effective automatic eye autofocus. So you point a camera at someone you're taking a portrait of, the autofocus system will find the eye and um, you'll no longer be sort of hunting around manually to, or to set your focus manually. You'll be relying on uh, these really advanced autofocus systems to do a lot of the work for you. And both this camera, the Nikon Z7, Z6, and the Sony a7R3 and Sony A7 III, they all have this great technology where you point a camera at a person, the camera, the autofocus system will find the eye and you get great portrait shots effectively and easily that way. Um, now, one thing I will say is in the little time I spent playing around with the two camera bodies next to one another, my impression was that the Sony A7R III auto eye, the eye autofocus um, was quicker and was better. And I would say, when I say quicker, what I mean is that it would pick up the eye at greater distances. So if you're pointing at someone down the street, the, the Sony A7R 3 would be finding the eye sooner than the Nikon Z7 was. Um, so autofocus was, uh, is very important to what I do. Um, because I principally shoot uh, surf photography, dynamic subjects. Um, but I have to say that I, um, I ended up shooting with the Nikon D850 in single point autofocus mode, where I would be manually tracking a surfer or tracking the subject through, through the frame. I'd be getting the autofocus point where I want it, then I'd be taking the shot. And that, that is, the, the way in which I've shot mostly when I'm doing sort of surf photography. So although this advanced autofocus technology is great, especially for video, um, in terms really of what I'm doing, I'm still at this point using that same technique with the Nikon Z7. There are automatic subject tracking um, uh, settings available in the Z7 that you can use. Um, I tried those out. I went to the, the wave pool in Bristol and, um, and, uh, just literally set the camera on that auto tracking mode and tried taking shots. And I got mixed results. You know, I got quite a few in focus shots. I got quite a few out of focus shots or essentially shots where the focus had been placed incorrectly by the camera. Um, so I find I have a more, um, a greater certainty of getting the results I want if I use this same approach, single point autofocus, setting it, firing away. But for portrait photography that I want to get into and uh, for video, the autofocus systems in these camera cameras are perfect. You know, they um, means like when I'm doing a video, I can point the camera at myself and I can rely on it to find the eye or to find the, uh, the piece of equipment that I'm that I'm holding it up to um, the camera. Um, 
And also, I have to say, when I've been doing surf videography, I've been happy with how the focus system is tracking the subject in the water. It's doing a great job. So that's kind of the big change for me in terms of moving to the Z7. It's autofocus in video and also autofocus in portrait situations. Um, so why didn't you get the A7R3 then if autofocus was the critical thing and you thought that the autofocus performance was a bit better than the Sony? The main reason was to do with the cost of the Sony lenses that I want, that I would have wanted. Um, so when push came to shove, I thought I'm going to be able to get hold of the lenses that I want to use with this camera more economically if I go with the Nikon uh, than if I go with the Sony. Um, I already have some lenses that I'm happy with. Obviously I've got like this is a 300mm f4 that I, a Nikon, that I use a lot in my surf photography and now in my surf videography. Um, and I love this lens. I love the way it renders. It's just the image quality is beautiful with this lens. Um, uh, and I was finding that when you when I was wanting looking at lenses that I would want at the Sony, it was going to be thousands and thousands of pounds to to switch to Sony um, and get the lenses I wanted. So really, it was down to economics. It was it's going to be easier for me to stick with Nikon. That said, um, I've been very, very happy with it. Um, the image quality, I'm going to put some, some images up. I'm going to try and scatter them throughout this video, really. Um, just to give you an idea of the image quality you can get. Now, that is also, bear in mind that a lot of the images I'm showing are the Nikon Z7 with, with not really high quality superior glass, you know, not really superior lenses, which I'm going to be looking to acquire, uh, mm. you know, the um, more high quality primes and uh, the faster telephoto lens options. Mm. At the moment, I'm still using a Sigma 150 to 600 as a primary telephoto lens for surf photography. That doesn't have great, uh, I mean, it, Personally, when I look at the images, I really like them, but it's not regarded as producing like the greatest uh, image quality. So I'm going to do a quick like pros and cons list for comparing this to the D850. So image quality, to me, it feels it produces the same type of image quality as the D850. Um, autofocus, um, I feel in most situations, it's producing as good or very close to as good autofocus for still shooting. For video shooting, it's just leaps and bounds ahead of the D850. Um, ergonomics. Um, while it's nice to have um, a lightweight camera, I think in I, uh, I still probably would say I prefer the feel of the D850 in the hand, just you don't get this experience where your finger is dropping off the bottom of the camera body that, I mean, most of the manufacturers, reviewers talk about this issue with Sony, with, uh, with Nikon, with Canon, a lot of the time that the camera bodies, that sort of big DSLR feel that seems like a perfect fit for the hand isn't always true with the mirrorless bodies, but I've adjusted to the ergonomics of using this. Also at times, the fact that it's lighter is, is nice, you know, I've got to say. When you're walking around with heavy gear, it can get it can get old quite quickly. Um, now, one um, now what else? In body image stabilization. Uh, with the, when I first started shooting with the D850, I've, uh, you know I was warned you're going to want to shoot at higher shutter speeds because with such a high resolution sensor, it's a lot easier for you to end up with. Um, with shake visible in your images if you're shooting at slower shutter speeds. So the fact that this has in-body image stabilization, meaning that I can shoot at slower shutter speeds handheld, I really like that. Um, um, now, I'll talk briefly about the lenses. So 
this this is the 24 to 70 f4s that comes as a kit lens with the z7 and z6 this lens is just fantastic just um i've been watching uh, some youtubers landscape photographers that are talking about this you know they're questioning whether or not they're going to need to switch to the 24 to 70 f 2.8 the premium lens because they just are so happy with the result they're getting with this lens so uh, this isn't really a kit lens this is a, a really fantastic lens in its own right um, so my my initial experience of lenses that are designed specifically for the nikon z series are very positive um, i'm very excited to i'm hopefully going to be getting the nikon z 85 mil 1.8 which is just getting spectacular reviews um, so so yeah lens wise well the only one downside is that the the z lenses are a little bit more expensive than f mount lenses so that's one drawback but as i said you can get so many f mount lenses that you can use on this camera with the f to z adapter um, that you know nikons in terms of the lens options you've got are always a good choice so um if you um have historically been shooting with nikon cameras and nikon lenses and um, you're interested in going into the z cameras one of the major things you'll be asking yourself is does the adapter that nikon supplies for the the nikon z cameras does the adapter that allows you to use f mount lenses work really well and uh, this was probably one of the biggest questions i had when it came to switching to the uh, the z7 i really wanted to try some of my lenses using this f to z adapter that allows me to put f mount lenses on the z7 cameras so i'd always kind of been wary of adapters um, and i'm relatively new to photography i've only been shooting seriously for sort of two and a half years regularly um, so i i'm not someone who's used adapters lots and lots over the years but i the general impression i have is that adapters were were always a, a, a big compromise that you lost some autofocus performance when you used adapters and that that generally you would want to try and avoid using them if you could now my experience with this adapter has really made me question that so this as you can see so this side you've got the f mount design here you've got the z mount so it's on nice and easily there um, yeah and i've just been really really impressed with the performance so this lens the 300 mil f4 that i mentioned earlier this just performs i've i can't really see any um autofocus performance change between using this with the f to z adapter and how it performed on the d850 that i have it's just if there is a difference it's very very minimal and a lot of a lot of uh, users just aren't going to discern a difference in autofocus point uh, performance so yeah it's uh, my experience has been as well that with various different types of lenses that i've used it performs that well as well the one big caveat is that it doesn't autofocus afd or ai lenses <laughs> It will only autofocus Nikon AFS lenses. So that restricts you a little bit when you're looking at, you know, I buy a lot of my gear on the used market and I'm looking now only at AFS lenses um, because I, I want to retain the option to use them in autofocus mode. So that's one thing to bear in mind. But if you if this is causing you to really hesitate, I would say go to your camera retailer when we can again and um, give it a try. And I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised by the performance. It's, um, it's a fantastic piece of equipment.
So what are the um, drawbacks? What are the negatives of my experience? Um, I would say there's only one drawback to this uh, for me personally. Well, there are two. There's one significant one. The other one is, is more a sort of perception and subjective feeling one. But the, the one negative is that with mirrorless cameras, it's so much easier to get dust on your camera sensor. Um, so that does mean that you have to learn how to clean your image sensor, which is intimidating for a lot of people. Me included a little bit, but I'm, I'm becoming less and less sort of intimidated by it. But it is easy. You know, I had the DA50 and got the, for shot with it for a year and didn't really get a significant amount of dust on the sensor at any point. And I shoot in dusty environments, the beach countryside, um, often windy environments where it's, and I would, I wasn't shooting with two camera bodies, so I was changing lenses in the field, um, and I didn't really get any significant or visible amount of dust on the sensor in that time. This one, um, I got dust on the sensor that was visible uh, to your narrower apertures, probably after about six weeks. Um, so that is a frustration. Um, that's the same for almost all mirrorless camera bodies. Uh, the, the other drawback for me personally is just a general feeling that this camera feels a lot more delicate than the D850. Now it's weather sealed, I've not had any issues with it, I haven't really put it to the test and shot in a lot of heavy rain or anything with it yet, but, um, but my general feeling is just that it doesn't feel as tough as the D850 felt. Uh, the D850, you almost felt like you could drop it and just pick it up and not worry about that. I wouldn't put it to that test, but it, it had that feeling about it. This camera, um, I feel very protective of it. Um, um, it just feels a bit more vulnerable. Um, so that's probably, that's probably the only drawbacks that I've really encountered. Um, I suppose... The only other drawback is, as I say, some of the S-line lenses, so that's lenses that are designed specifically for the Z-mount, are still uh, very expensive. Um, but for the time being, I can get around that by using F-mount lenses with the F to Z. And once the used market fills up a little bit more with the, some of these S-line lenses, I will probably... Um, keep my costs down by going via the used market for a lot of gear. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's my experience so far. Um, probably these, the, the major, the major thing I would say is that, um, now I've only recently started shooting video regularly and sort of, it's very much an avenue that I, it's new to me. Um, and it is really, really exciting having a camera that um, I'm going to be able to take to locations. I, you know, we're not able to travel very much at the moment. Um, depending on our circumstances, it's driving us all a bit mad. Um, but I'm so excited when traveling becomes more of a real world option again to take this to some of the locations I've been to before and to get um, some good video footage with it. Um, I've been shooting a bit of video locally, um, um, sort of trying to really learn how to use it most effectively. Um, and yeah, it's just a very exciting proposition having a high quality video or a hybrid camera that I can shoot fantastic stills on and really good quality video. Um, for people who are more, who lean more towards videography and are considering one of the Z-mount cameras. I have heard in several reviews that the Nikon Z6 is, while it's a lower megapixel sensor, it's like around a 25 megapixel sensor, um, I've heard people saying that it, it's a better option for people who are um, really leaning more on the videography side as opposed to the stills photography side. Um, so, and I've also heard that the Z6 is a better 
high ISO performer than this. Now, I try and keep my, I don't shoot at higher ISOs very much, but I think if you were someone who was going to be regularly shooting, you know, at the higher ISO, sort of 2000 plus or whatever, then I would read up about the high ISO performance of this. I don't think it rates particularly well um, um, when as a high ISO option. Um, but for someone like me who likes to shoot, you know, at the base ISO as often as possible, you know, it's great. And that's another positive thing about this camera. It has a base ISO of 64 as opposed to 100, which a lot of the cameras have. So you can really, um, that can be useful in the field as well when you're trying to do more sort of landscape or seascape style shots. So, yeah, again, not a really highly technical review, um, just a chance to have a look over the camera, um, give you a glimpse of more of the equipment that I'm using. Um, I mean, my general feeling is now that with camera gear that we're kind of, that we're, that I personally have been really spoiled with the camera gear that I've had. I've probably bought gear that was, that was, that was better than my photography skills merited at the time. You know, having a D850 really, is, it's a professional camera. It really should be for professional photographers. Um, but I suppose one of the ways that I've justified it is that, you know, I would be out shooting with that camera pretty much every time I'm off work. You know, I'm just, this is what I spend all my free time doing. Um, and it's been the same with this. Um, you know, it really is a passion for me, photography, and just trying to progress and develop my compositional skills, trying to put myself in different situations, trying to learn as much as possible about it. And I generally feel like the tools we have now do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Like the autofocus systems, you know, they're just so spectacularly good. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That really, I, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the um, over the next five years in photography. I mean, the Sony Alpha One's just been launched. It's like a 50 megapixel camera that shoots at 30 frames per second. Now, those numbers are just kind of crazy. Um, um, so and they just give you a glimpse of how good the technology is getting. But yeah, so in conclusion, um, yeah, I'm happy with this having switched from a D850. Um, it's doing what I wanted it to do, which is essentially opening up the world of videography to me. And yeah, it's exciting. Um, so yeah, please um, keep checking in with the channel if you've uh, enjoyed this. If you've got any questions about the Z7, um, then drop me a line. Um, if I can't answer them, then I can hopefully point you to a resource that will be able to answer it for you. Um, but yeah, keep checking in. I'll um, try and um, post uh, some of the video footage. I'm going to be shooting with this quite regularly, so um, so you get a glimpse of what I'm able to do with it. And uh, yeah, I hope you're all well.